I'm here today with uh, Michael van der Haven, VP, Vice President Consulting Expert within our oil and gas unit. My name is Ramon Bouter. I'm a Director of Consulting Services within the same unit as well. So what we uh, have noticed over the past uh, period, the recent period, is that not every organization uh, who is willing to implement and work with OSDU might have the right knowledge or expertise or maybe budget to implement uh, its own OSDU platform. And we all know that uh, it is a complex platform using a lot of technologies and uh, you should have the availability, but also the, uh, the knowledge and the people and the time within your organization to, on one hand, implement uh, an OSDU platform, but on the other hand, also maintain it. And uh, I think it was also within one of the uh, earlier OSU forum uh, meetings that specifically the request came, uh, is there or will there be a pass version of OSU available? Because we do not want to focus on the technology and we want to focus on the usage and, and uh, being able to uh, implement it as easy as possible. Now, that is where our uh, drive uh, started to uh, to work on an implementation of OSDU in a PaaS uh, format. But on the other hand, when you have this platform, uh, when you have the platform running, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the focus and the value of OSDU comes in its usage, uh, in, in the, the value of the data that you have in it and uh, that you can work with and combine probably from various sources. Um, but that means that you need to migrate data into uh, OSDU. You might have, uh, we have seen several examples where you need to adopt your applications and maybe your own scripts within your organizations. And uh, that might require you also to set up a development environment, uh, a test environment. You want to do some proof of concepts uh, maybe sort out some use cases. Uh, how can this work for my specific department or in this specific workflow? You do not want to test that uh, on your production environment. So that might require that you have various instances of OSU running uh, apart from your production environment. But you want to be able to easily start it up, uh, uh, then work with it. And then when, when you've done your tests, maybe close it down. Or uh, what I mentioned before, that you um, uh, set up this, this uh, a development pipeline with a an, an development test and production environment. So that all already requires several instances of overview running. However, to implement and maintain that, as I mentioned, uh, you want to spend as less time as possible for that and you want to focus on uh, the functionality. So those were a few of the say uh, uh, design drivers or thoughts that we had when we were thinking about okay what would an organization need if it starts the journey working with OSDU and the main thing of course is ease of use. You, you, you want to immediately or as quick as possible start working with the data, uh, start integrating it or inserting it and, and uh, do your thing with it. But you also want to spend as less time as possible on your operational maintenance. And of course, the, the quicker you can start with it and, and reduce your implementation time, the better. So operational efficiency, ease of use are a few of the main drivers that we had in the development of uh, CGI Pivot. Supporting the possibility to start and stop various uh, OSU instances easily uh, should be included as well. And we also understand that every organization that might have its own cloud service provider that they work with, uh, either it be Amazon or Azure or maybe Google, Google Cloud. So if you build such a platform, uh, you, you should also be able to support various cloud service providers. Now, with that, 
uh, CGI started its journey to build uh, our pivot platform, uh, which comprises all those um, uh, items that I just mentioned, reducing the implementation cost by immediately within a few minutes being able to start up an OSU instance. Um, and then within that, selecting which cloud service provider you want to use, uh, use uh, as your infrastructure provider. Um, and that makes it easier for, uh, for example, for all operators or all, also maybe startups or research companies to say, okay, if I need to develop a specific application, I can immediately uh, and with, uh, within a few minutes uh, set my uh, OSU instance up and then start developing, start testing and start doing your, your uh, business uh, work. Also, with the knowledge that we have built uh, with the uh, development of our platform, uh, the, the years of experience we have in the oil and gas industry um, and, and in doing these kind of projects with integrating and migrating data, we efficient to bring that together. So we are starting to set up our CGI OSU Center of Excellence, where we bring this all together. On the one hand, the platform, but on the other hand, also uh, the, the consulting expertise and the project expertise to support your organization in implementing an uh, OSU environment and running your applications on top of that. Now, to show how this would work in practice, I would like to ask Michael to give us and uh, lead us through a demonstration that we've created um, to show you how uh, CGI Pivot works and how easy it is uh, to uh, to start up an instance and uh, integrate some data into the platform. Michael? Yeah, thank you, Ramon, if everybody can hear me. Um, so this is a, a video that we quickly recorded for, uh, for a quick demonstration, and this is the more or less landing page or the, uh, uh, the, the, the page that you're confronted with as soon as you're onboarded in, uh, into CGI Pivot. Here you can create organizations, you can create projects, uh, which you can use as a logical uh, uh, yeah, setup for, for any instance that you want to run on. We start out with creating a uh, first organization, uh, obvious one, CGI Nederland, with a description on what, what we're uh, doing there. You can provide a couple of tags uh, in there as well. This is quite useful if, if you're, for example, a service supplier that is managing OSU instances for others. Within an organization, you can create a project or multiple projects, and you can do that uh, along with actual projects that you're doing in your organization, or like we're doing here, along the lines of the uh, the different data, data types or locations of data that we have. Uh, we create an extra project here, and since we created an offshore project, we now create an onshore project. And there we are. We have we have got a couple of projects in the uh, uh, in the environment. Like I said, we can also create multiple organizations. So if you're indeed a service provider that is doing the IT or OSU management for other uh, operators, this could be another customer. In this case, we're setting up something for CGI Netherlands, but now in an R&D environment. Provide a description again, simple tag, and we add the organization. And of course, within the organization, we can create projects again. In this case, it's uh, also along the lines of the same projects that we set up in the uh, in the main organization, but now in the R and D context. Another one for the onshore. And there we are, another organization with multiple projects and also two projects uh, again. Well, we have multiple organizations. We have multiple uh, projects now. Uh, let's go to the original one that we uh, that we created. Uh, and we select one of the projects, North Sea Data, and let's start working with, with that project. So let's first start creating an instance. And let's say that we have never worked with OSDU yet. We really want to test it out. 
let's set something up where we start testing out and working with the data ingestion into the platform. We're going to set up a completely new OSU instance. As you can see, we can choose between AWS and Azure. We set up something in Azure, provide a quick description for it. And once we start creating it, in this case, it's going to be created in a couple of seconds. Why is it done in a couple of seconds? Because it is an area in which we have OSU instances running already. If it's on a region that is completely new and you're our first customer there, then it can also be created, but it's going to take a, a little bit longer. Like I said, we have a test environment for ingestion. Well, let's create a production environment as well. So once we're happy with the, uh, with the ingestion uh, logic, uh, we can start uploading our data into a production environment. And in this case, we're doing it on AWS. Yeah, so now we have a, uh, a couple of uh, instances running. Uh, once we have the instance running, of course, we want to have data in there as well. So now we're starting to, to test our, uh, our ingestion. In this case, we have a Kibana setup uh, connected to the, uh, to, to the instance. As you can see, there's no data in there, uh, in there yet. And what is it that we're going to test? Well, we're going to test a new schema, for, for example. So in this case, we have enhanced the, uh, the schema for fields with, with a bit more of a GeoJSON shape uh, uh, format. We're going to upload that, that, that schema and we're going to upload a couple of uh, wells in, in, in the, into the system as well. We're doing that with an alternative ingestion pipeline, uh, which is a, a tad bit faster than the uh, than the uh, than, than the native one. As you can see, we're uploading schemas it takes just a second. If we upload a data set with uh, what is it? I think ten or twelve wells or something like that. So we're going to upload sample one here. Upload the records. It's also processed in a couple of seconds. Now we go back to the uh, to the Kibana setup, so we can visualize the data that we have just loaded. And Kibana is a system that refreshes every 15 minutes, so we're now going to force refresh the uh, the data. And as you can see, some data is appearing. So we're going to resize the map, or at least uh, fit the map to the to the data that we just loaded. And as you can see, a field has been loaded. If you zoom out a little bit, there's a couple of uh, a couple of wells that have been injected into the system as well. So as you can see, we had an Azure setup here, uh, set up in a couple of seconds. Uploading the data was taking just a minute or something or something like that. So it's easy to set up an environment and, and quickly toy around. Well, let's say that with this new schema, we're happy with the ingestion results and we, we want to uh, uh, redo that for the for the production data, but with a different data set. So we're going to go to the production environment. And as you can see, that one is running on AWS. Again, we're using this file manager to, to upload the data. We're going to pick exactly the same schema again that we enrich the system with. There we go. It's taking just a second as well. We upload the sample. So this one is with different data, another field, another set of wells. Also in North Sea, so again a uh, a Kibana setup that is connected to the uh, to the OSU instance. We force refresh again. Well, now it looks kind of similar until we zoom in. And as you can see, there's a field with a different shape, actually with wells inside of the field, a couple of uh, of them around there as well. And of course, we can view the data side by side as well. So I have the uh, Kibana setup from the AWS setup and the uh, and the Azure setup uh, as well. So this illustrates the the, the scenario that that Ramon just, just described. Well, if you want to test out with your data, you can quickly set up a, 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 an environment, work with the data, work with new schemas and stuff like that. Of course, in our time frame, we don't have sufficient time to look into the APIs, into the billing aspects and stuff like that. There's a lot more to the to, to this platform. Uh, but this was the quick demo that we're giving. So thanks for your attention on that one. Yeah, thank you, uh, Michael. Um, and uh, also uh, what, what we uh, were not showing here in this demo at the moment is that apart from, let's say, uh, creating the instances, uh, you're of course also able to close down and shut down an instance or close a project and maybe start up a new one. So that's the flexibility that we bring with uh, CGI Pivot. 
And of course, it's uh, fully um, OSDU uh, compliant or compatible with, uh, with the APIs and uh, the way of working. Um, just a short or a brief um, uh, use case that, or customer case that I wanted to uh, share with you as well, based on CGI Pivot. Uh, recently, uh, we have been executing a proof of concept with the Norwegian uh, oil company London Energy Norway, where we use, in this case, specifically a hybrid uh, version of implementation of OSDU. So, um, or a hybrid solution in general. So we had OSU running in the cloud on CGI Pivot, as uh, we just uh, showed. Uh, on the other side, uh, the company wanted to leave the data on-premise uh, where it currently is, uh, but uh, being able to combine uh, the data, uh, the metadata, and, and make it searchable through OSDU, through CGI Pivot in the cloud. So we've been working with data sets from well tops and well logs from different um, uh, different applications, uh, where we had uh, tremendous support as well from uh, uh, one of their uh, current suppliers, Cutme, who with their barrel solution is able to synchronize data between different locations and then provide the index to our and the metadata to our platform. And with that, um, uh, being able to uh, do an uh, analysis or uh, 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 search for the data through the OSU platform. So we've done that in an, let's say, a, a, a specific way of working where in six weeks we executed this uh, proof of concept. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, you've got two minutes. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm also, thank you. So uh, from the business case, uh, in the first week, defining that in more detail, uh, setting up the infrastructure, all the way to um, uh, at the end, uh, showing the, uh, the results of this proof of concept and demoing that to the business. Uh, we've been able to do that in a standardized way of six weeks. And that really showed that uh, both uh, OSDU is a very powerful, powerful platform. And if you build it with uh, CGI Pivot, you can immediately start and, and execute such a proof of concept in, uh, yeah, with a tremendous less amount of effort. So that's what we wanted to share with you today. Thank you for your attention. Um, hope you enjoyed the, uh, uh, the, the demonstration and, and the presentation, and it was a fabulous view as well. Thank you very much.